The word impossible as nothing more than motivation. And that's exactly what I do. Once a day in the morning, pretty big deal of the day. Hair gel comes from Save America. Wow, that looks pretty good. New studio coming to you live all the way back from Delray Beach. Weird day today. Really strange. And then we're going to start getting just some crazy things. Got my Snapchat going, a little bit of a distraction, but crazy day. So when the weather drops here, iguanas fall from the sky. I was walking out by this mega palm that we have. Iguana just fell right out of the tree, right into the water. I was, I was shook. And not a lot of things scare me. But now you're also like, wow, Phil, the new studio looks pretty cool. It looks good just for Florida. Okay, we got like the lights. You remember these lights you would put up like during COVID and like you felt cool because there was nothing else to do. So put up these. But then you're like, wow, like what's that? Okay, these are old, old earbuds. They're like jet blue. So you're like, Phil, what is this shirt you got on? And it's like, well, just read it. What does it say? Winners win because maybe somebody put something into. We'll talk about that later about winners win, but you could go cop the new merch, the new winners win shirts. They're coming out very, very soon. I mean, why would you not want to walk around wearing winners win unless you're a loser? And I know a lot of losers. So everybody's like, Ben Phil, you haven't been on the podcast in a while, right? You last time I was with you, we had crazy guests, right? We had Trent. We had Stratman Oakman guys. We really were going crazy. And then that day in class happened. When we got up. We defended the president. And then, you know, death threats. But you know what they say? Death threats that don't kill you, they only make you stronger. So we dealt with all that. That was a lot of fun. The whole entire experience was just surreal. But... Then in the summer, had a surgery, so doctor goes like, oh, you're only going to be out for two weeks. Two weeks becomes two months. So now we're back, and then I was going to be like, we're during football season this year, we're going to do football episodes weekly. Nope, couldn't do that. And I'll tell you this, out of all the places that I've coached, this one was interesting. It, it really was. And it's just because it's like, we, I talk about it all the time with uh, Rich Robinson, a great friend of mine, about how there's people who are low achievers and they're mediocre in everything that they do in life. And then you get people like a lot of you or like myself where winning is everything. Because if you're not winning in life, what are you doing? You're obviously losing. And nobody likes to lose. I mean, do you like to lose? Think about that for a minute. Well, you're sitting at home. Do you like to lose? No, you don't. So... <laughs> I was excited about this new opportunity, so I took it. And it's amazing what some low-life losers try to teach on kids. It really is. Like, we were in a meeting one day. I don't even know if you call it that because we never had them. And one of the guys in there is talking about that, you know, it's good if, you know, you go four and four here and, uh, you know, you don't even have to make the playoffs. Like, Hold on. The goal is to go four and four? What? Uh, how does that make any sense? So so what we're what we're trying to achieve here is our goal is to win four games and lose four games. Well, guess what? If we don't accomplish the goal of losing four games, then we lose six games. The loser mentality. And then, like, when people say, well, what's wrong with this next generation? It's when you have people who are mediocre who are telling kids, oh, it's okay to go four and four. Oh, it, be four and four. Go four and four. That's all that matters. What? How does that make any sense? Like, if you're not first, you're last. Like Hillary Clinton. She came in second place. She lost. She lost. Were they like, oh, it's okay? No, they weren't. They they cried for the last like seven years and they still are. So 
that was something that I had to deal with week in and week out was, you know, I'm, I'm a high energy, highly motivated. It's not just because of that Celsius over there, not even sponsored by them. I just like it a lot. And it's just this thing. I just have this mindset, right? Mindset over matter, right? Be the lion. That's what everybody says. Lion's the king of the jungle. And I, I've always had this mindset that I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be number one. Now, listen, in doing those things, so I've made a lot of enemies. But not like enemies where, oh, they're going to try to kill me, you know. But enemies in the sense that like when people see what you're doing, they're like, they don't like it because your energy and all this stuff. But it's only because they wish that they could do what you're doing. It's always been real simple. So what... I really saw in like the problem with the upcoming generation is what it is, is they're having people who are leading them who are mediocre people who don't want to be successful and who don't want to strive to be the greatest. And I'll never accept that ever, ever in my life to ever like walk into a room or walk into somewhere where you're going to motivate and inspire and win and win and win. And then you got people in there who just want to be mediocre. And they're telling you, well, oh, well, because you, you do this, it doesn't work. And this and that and that. Look, like, okay, man, like, hate me because I'm on the, I'm going crazy because, you know, we score a touchdown. Like, what? Are we supposed to score a touchdown and be like, oh, no, damn it. No, we're not supposed to score a touchdown. Like, what? And then we would have games where we're scoring and then, you know, we, we kill a team, crush them. And then it's, oh, well, you know, the, the, you know, the coaches from the other team, you know, they emailed us that you know, it was class that we didn't try to go and score with four minutes left to go in the game. It was class. What are you talking about, class? When in your life are you ever competing against somebody, the competitor on the other side of the field who wants to destroy you, they want to crush you, everything that you've worked so hard to do, they want to crush you. And then all of a sudden, it's all, oh, you know, it was classy. You didn't go down there and punch it in from the five. Get out of here. Like, get out of here. Like, what sense does that make to anybody in the world? I get, you know, you don't make, you know, don't like run up a score. But guess what, guys? Plain and simple. You want to win and you want to send a message? We're going to come at you harder than ever before. Same thing in politics. Like, you don't see, you know, uh, Trump or Biden being like, oh, if we just get to 270, that's all that matters. No, they want to get the most electoral votes possible. Yeah, 270, you win and it's over. And listen, anybody who just hits that number 270, you're happy. But you want to win by a lot. Everything you do in life, you want to win by a lot. You want to make more money than the guy next to you. You want to make more money than the guy in front of you. So it's these people who have these ideologies to be weak. And it all comes down to what I saw. And I was like, I'm going to do one of these podcasts. I, I had one ready to go. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to wait on this one. We're going to wait on this one, okay? And it's not so much that I'm frustrated, about, but it's because of the kids. The kids suffer when they're around mediocre people. And... What I find really, really crazy is what mediocre people will try to do is they're going to attack the guy that comes in with the most energy, the most motivation, the most hype to be successful and for the people around him to be successful. And when you have that in an organization working together, it's never going to work. It's never going to work. So that's what I went through. I mean, I would get texts that I suck. I'm the worst. I'm this. I'm that. Uh, you know. And the next day, it's, oh, my gosh, thank goodness we have you. But then the next day, it's, oh, you're the worst. You're the worst. You're the worst. Like, okay. Like, I went home for a couple of days to go see all my people back home. A lot of big success by a lot of my guys back at home. I was getting texts. Oh, you're destroying the team for going away. What? It's called break from college. So I'm going to get on a plane and land and go see my friends that are home. It's break. And when I came right back, 
same high energy. Keep trying to destroy me. It's not going to happen. Never will. Never has. And I find all of this stuff interesting because you deal with a lot of weak guys, right? And a lot of people, they're not going to like you because of how you walk into a room or the things that you want to accomplish in your life. And this last season, I've had so many of these examples, right? Mediocre people, low achieving people. And people, you know, to the to a loser, motivation looks like aggression, right? Nick Saban said something along these lines. Let me actually pull this up for you guys, right? As I just send all this to everybody on Snapchat, let them know we're filming a podcast right now. Like we're back. Like we are back. So here it is. It's one of my all-time favorite quotes. It's kind of just like you don't discuss winning with losers because they'll never understand it. Nick Saban. Oh, here it is. Here it is. I just had it. Passion always looks like aggression to the unmotivated. Plain and simple. The guy had one person say that, oh my goodness, I'm afraid that he's brainwashing the kids with politics. It's like, no, I'm not brainwashing them with politics. I'm brainwashing them on how to become a winner. <laughs> and it, it was just crazy stuff like this that I think that you deal with. Um, and this happens all over the place where you have people who they don't want to see other people succeed. And I think it's really simple. Like, you know, Coach Cal over at UK, he always talks about that, you know, coaching for fame and fortune, it's a quick way to failure. But if you coach to help somebody fulfill their dreams and aspirations, then you become a dream fulfiller. And then when you're chasing those with them, then you become a dream fulfiller. And what's better than that? You know, I just, I know I just like repeated myself real quick with that. So might get a little, you know, like, oh my gosh, come on, Phil. You got to be better. Dyslexia. Calm down, people. Um, so anyway, though, uh, pretty cool, though. I mean, that's kind of what went on for the from about August to about like two weeks ago. Then, you know, went back home, saw a bunch of great people. But there's just so much like huge success that so many people I know are having. Um, and then I saw this shirt last night. So I brought it right over here. Steve Mortarano over at Cafe Mortarano in Fort Lauderdale. Greatest place on earth. Success brings false friends and true enemies. And that's so true. Think about that for a minute in your life. When you've been successful, all of a sudden everybody wants to you know, be your friend. But then you get people that who, oh, they hate you. But then you also have to then take, right? Like pit, choose your enemies wisely, okay? I saw that the other day and I was thinking about that. And it makes a lot of sense. Like me and my great friend, Will Priest here, we always talk about that. You want to win, you got to keep working hard and you got to keep on going. And it kind of sounds stupid what I'm about to say. I'm going to break down the word win for you. So win, W-I-N. So the win in, so the W and win stands for we. We as a team, how are we going to contribute to this? Then the I stands for yourself. What are you going to do on your own to help out your team? And then the N in win stands for new. Every single time that you step on the field or in work or whatever you do, you have to find a new way to win. So I kind of broke down that word and me and him, we were talking about it because you know, we saw a lot of stuff happen together, right? When we were in high school and now, you know, he's playing basketball in college. I'm doing all this politics, motivation, sports coaching. And we have the exact same ideas just about, you know, what motivates people, what gets people to really, really want to win. And it's the journey of those seasons. It's the journey of winning that keeps you motivated and keeps you going. But then like, you know, do I have enemies? Maybe two people. Three people, four people. Yeah, four people. No, six. Uh, ooh, ooh, maybe five. Oh, all right. It's it's a single digit number. Okay, it's a single digit number of the enemies. But you never want to make enemies with somebody who could really hurt you in the long run. 
But then, you know, friends are also like stocks. We talked about this in like the beginning of the show. You know, you've got to be careful how much you invest in some friends and how much you invest in other friends. You know, some are there short term, some are there long term, some are a cryptocurrency, some are like Bitcoin. They shoot up one day, then the next day they're on, they're just like leaving you on half swipe on Snapchat. And that's it. By the way, Snapchat, there's like this Snapchat plus things. I am, listen, I love Snapchat. You, if you're on my private story, you know how much I love Snapchat and how much fun it is, especially that private story. But Snapchat has become such a crazy thing that I really feel destroys people's mental health. You go out there, you buy Snapchat plus for whatever it is. You literally can stalk and see where people are going, like spot to spot to spot. Or then if you text them like, yo, dude, like want to go courtside tonight? Or, hey, man, what are you doing? Or, hey, man, I'm in the hospital. Can you come pick me up? People literally watch. I'll try. I'll open it on mine. See if you could like see it through the screen. Look at this. You could literally just half swipe. Look at that. Half swipe. And you could read the whole message. And then not even see it. But if you got Snapchat Plus, you could see that. Like Snapchat is purposely trying to mess with your mental health. And I believe that a thousand percent. It literally is just showing you like, hey, man, that guy doesn't care about you at all. Like he hates your guts. Don't be friends with him. So it's helping you, but it's not helping you. Also, what I think is really just awful to do in a loser and a low life and a weak person move and what a weak guy move. Me and Will Parisi talk about those all the time. Leaving somebody like open on Snapchat. But anyway, that's just my little like rant about that right there. So I'll, I'll leave you with that. Um, so the podcast, you know, we're going to really be teeing off big time guests coming on rapid fire every single week. If I don't get a guest, it'll just be me and you going through a lot of crazy stuff. I'm really excited about this episode because I'm kind of just like at this point, like, you know what? It's all off the line. We're just going in full steam ahead and we're just going to talk about life philosophy, all that stuff that makes a winner win. Um, so yeah, saw Mike Tyson the other night, little kid got a photo with him. He got back in his car and he drove away. What a caption that could have been on Instagram, but whatever it is, what it is. Um, but yeah, everybody. So that's kind of what's been going on in, uh, my life. I'm, I don't know what's going on in your life. We're entering a presidential election year. So this page is going to get pretty crazy with a lot of that stuff. Um, But right now, let me just explain to you guys like what's going on behind me because I do love this, right? It's mindset is everything. The lion. Why is the lion the king of the jungle? Because it's his mindset that keeps him going. Then right here, this is in a good family friend of mine's, uh, their house. So I got it last year and I absolutely just love it. I'm just going to take a photo of it so you don't have to like see like how like bad like some of it looks. So winning is... All right, I'm going to read this out loud to you guys all, okay? Winning is not a sometime thing. It's an all-the-time thing. You don't win once in a while. You don't do things right once in a while. You do them right all the time. Winning is a habit. Unfortunately, so is losing. And I really love this quote because, you know, in coaching, and I've seen this especially in life, is a winner never loses. They only learn. But a loser is somebody who just flat out, they lose once and they give up. And I know a lot of guys out there who are just total losers. And I mean, they couldn't, they they would lose the, uh, the biggest loser competition in the world. That's how much they're a loser. But then I know a lot of people who they're winners and then they lose. And then you know what? Hey, let's go. Next day, we're back. We're getting ready to go back to work and we're going to go back and we're going to win. And you learn from those things. Like, especially in coaching, like I've been in games where I've cost my team the game because I'm so caught up in the moment of the game and, oh my gosh, we made it here. And then, oh my gosh, we lost and then the next season. When we're in that moment, again, we're there to win. And I'm only focused on this game at the end of the night. We're champions. We're winners because winners win. Um, but yeah, so I'm really looking forward to what's going to come in the next couple of weeks of the show the year 
So really good guests on football guys, little Mo coming on. So we'll see. Uh, let's talk sports though. Everybody here knows I love Bill Belichick. Saw him last week. Coach Belichick, can I get a photo? Ignored me. His guard threw me out of the stadium. Ignored me. It's okay. I'll get a photo with him one day. Get a photo with him one day. It'll happen. It will happen. So, uh, yeah, that's been the episode for tonight. Really enjoyed coming out here, talking to everybody. So we will see you soon. As always, welcome home. This is the Winners Podcast. Winners win.